Why is your sausage dog so lazy? I don't know. Come on, boy, let's go for a walk. Hello, what's going on here then? He's trying to get his wiener to stand up. Right. I'll come back later. We're rubbing shoulders with senior royalty again. The Queen of Cups is a card of intuition, compassion and emotional intelligence. She's also the precursor to the Queen of Hearts in modern playing cards, which makes perfect sense when you think about the Cups being all about emotions. As she's a Queen, she's associated with maturity, and as she's the Queen of Cups, that means emotional maturity. Now we can see very clearly that we've still got the dreamy aspect here. That's been a theme throughout the suit of Cups, but we've definitely moved on from the more useless aspects of that, and into something altogether more effective. Arthur Edward Waite says, beautiful, fair, dreamy as one who sees visions in the cup. This is, however, only one of her aspects. She sees, but she also acts, and her activity feeds her dream. So we're talking here about someone who combines their imagination with a strong desire to make things happen. She holds what is, without a doubt, the most elaborate cup in the entire suit. It's partly inspired by the Tarot de Marseille. If we look at the Ace of Cups from that deck, we can see that it's quite similar to the cup the Queen is holding, minus the bizarre looking pincer things on the side that look like they could grab hold of you. Anyway, the point is that she's put her imagination to good use and created something greater than what was there before. There's also a definite nurturing quality to this one. I think the emotional maturity aspect is something that manifests itself as a desire to take care of people. The Queen's ability to use her vision means she can come up with all kinds of inventive ways to make life better for everyone. Another important aspect of the Queen is the idea that she's deeply connected to her emotions. Getting in touch with our feelings can be a difficult thing to achieve. We often feel the need to hide our emotions, put on a brave face to the world, or avoid any negative feelings altogether. The problem with that is these things have a tendency to build up over time and make us very unhappy. At the extreme end of this is something called emotional detachment, where people can become fully disconnected from themselves and other people. However, in most cases, it's a reluctance to explore any part of ourselves that causes any kind of mental discomfort. The Queen, however, has moved way beyond this kind of thing and is living as her authentic self. Rachel Pollock says, the water flows over her feet and merges with her dress, signifying the unity of self with emotion and imagination. Also, on a side note, and if it's just me, I'll shut up, but does anyone think she looks a bit like Princess Diana? I mean, I'm not suggesting that Pixie time traveled to paint this one, but I do find it interesting that Lady Di used to call herself the Princess of Hearts. Fascinating. The Thoth card is... very pretty. Okay, I'll be honest. At first, I was struggling to make her out. I thought she was hiding behind the reeds somewhere. But in the words of the monkeys, then I saw her face. Now I'm a believer. There she is, peering out from something. Alistair Crowley says her image is of extreme purity and beauty, with infinite subtlety. To see the truth of her is hardly possible. I'll explain why I couldn't see her at first. For she reflects the nature of the observer in great perfection. So this is the idea that the Queen represents a mirror image of ourselves, and apparently that makes people like her even more. Lomalo Duquette says the Queen of Cups is popular and makes friends easily because when others look at her, they see only themselves. This is yet another card to be associated with pregnancy, and I'm guessing that's why we've got a stork wandering across the scene. Crowley goes on to say she's represented as enthroned upon still water. In her hand she bears a shell-like cup, from which issues a crayfish, and she bears the Lotus of Isis, the Great Mother. The last time we saw a crayfish was crawling out of the water on the moon card. That particular crayfish was described as The nameless and hideous tendency, that which is lower, than the savage beast. Scared! Scared! We need to get out of here. I'm guessing that this crayfish is a bit more friendly than that one. The Lotus of Isis would refer to the Egyptian goddess. Among many other things, Isis was worshipped as the perfect archetypal mother, so we've still got that strong maternal aspect to this card. We've got another straightforward pair of offerings from the Sforza of Marseille deck, although I do feel like the Marseille Queen looks a bit disgruntled. So would you if you had to balance this ridiculous crown on your head all day? The Solar Busker Queen is much closer to the Rider Weight version, but she's got a snake in her cup. So that's another reference to wisdom. We've had snakes slithering about all over the place in this suit. It must also express that no class in society should be deprived of the means to regenerate. Regenerate? Is that like a Doctor Who thing? Did he go back in the TARDIS to see Etaila? 
the hermetic title for the Queen of Cups is Queen of the Thrones of Water. Now I for one don't think a throne of water sounds like an especially practical piece of furniture. I can't see how it would have the structural stability required from something that you sit on. Unless of course we're referring to the throne of water that we've all got in our bathrooms. The other title for this card is Queen of the Nymphs and Undines, so we've still got our little water fairies swimming around. Now if we look on the Wade Smith card, we can actually see some little water baby nymphs, so again this ties in with the whole nurturing thing that we were talking about earlier. The Queen of Cups corresponds to the zodiac signs Gemini and Cancer. The crabs are back! Yeah! We've missed those little guys. This is also the first time we've seen the Gemini twins since the Lovers card, all the way back at number 6 in the Trumps. We've got that air and water thing happening again, going from 20 degrees Gemini to 20 degrees Cancer on the Zodiac clock. That means Cancer is the dominant sign. As with all the core cards in the Suit of Cups, the water sign is always the dominant one. We know Cancer is a very friendly and empathetic sign. Gemini is associated with curiosity and affection, so we've got a perfect combination for the Queen. Now regular views will know that I nearly always talk about Lon Milo Duquette because he's been such a huge inspiration, not just to the channel but to my whole ritual magic journey. The bit where I talk about celebrity star signs I totally stole from Lon Milo Duquette and the Queen of Cups just happens to be his birthday tarot card. So happy birthday, birthday Lon. Lon, we love you to bits. I very much doubt that he's watching. He might be. The Queen of Cups resides in the world of Briar and sits at the third sephira of Binar, together with the Three of Cups. So we're back at Binar, along with all the threes in the tarot. We're still in the watery world of Briar, which is the Kabbalistic world of creation. Now I wanted to talk a little bit here about the supernal triangle that sits at the very top of the tree. We've got the queens in Binar, the kings in Hopmar, and above them both is the sephira of Keta, which means crown. In a way, we can look at the king and queen as the masculine and feminine aspects of that crown. Keta is the sephira of divine purity, which then separates into Hokmar and Binar, giving us what we might call the archetypal trinity, which then gives birth to the remaining seven sephiroth. According to Samuel McGregor Mathers, the third sephira, or triad, is a feminine passive potency called Binar, the understanding, who is co-equal with Hokmar. For Hokmar, the number two is like two straight lines, which can never enclose a space, and therefore it is powerless till the number three forms the triangle. The Queen of Cups herb is Lady's Mantle. This herb is especially useful for invigorating and strengthening the female reproductive system. But what does it all mean? The Queen of Cups is a great card to pull, whichever way you look at it. She's kind, compassionate, intuitive and wise. Wade says, good, fair woman, honest, devoted woman, who will do service to the querent, loving intelligence, and hence the gift of vision. Success, happiness, pleasure. Also wisdom, virtue. A perfect spouse and a good mother. Now we're always going back into antiquity when we look at Wade's descriptions. The cultural climate was a bit different in London during the early 1900s, but we can still see what he means from a modern perspective. Also, once again, I'm going to point out that none of the chord cards are gender specific. These cards represent the masculine and feminine aspects in all of us, so the Queen applies to everyone, even if you're a 300 pound lumberjack called Big Ron. In a career sense, we're talking about finding success and adventure and being a great leader or boss, but all with a sense of compassion and genuine concern for the people working for them. That can mean you as the Queen in something that you're planning or currently working on. In a love sense, we're talking about a completely devoted and loyal partner, one who's deeply connected to their emotions and will not act out of spite or jealousy. It can also refer to someone offering a high level of emotional support, whether that's yourself helping out a friend or someone being a good shoulder for you to cry on. The motherhood element is another important aspect, so that can relate to yourself or to your own mother. Of course, that whole pregnancy thing keeps coming back up in these chord cards, so obviously that can be a good or a bad thing depending on the context. However, the overarching theme of the card is a powerful yet calm and compassionate leader and mother figure. Rachel Pollack says, What is most important is that she joins consciousness to feeling. She knows what she wants and will take the steps necessary to get it, yet she always acts with an awareness of love. Crowley leans more on the dreamy and imaginative qualities for the Foth Queen. He says the characteristics associated with this card are principally dreaminess, illusion and tranquility. A lady of distinction takes great interest in you. You will hear from her shortly. 
Oh, very nice. Tell me more. You will be invited to a dinner where you'll be more intemperate than the occasion demands for. Oh, sounds like I'm going to mess it all up by getting drunk and obnoxious. Again. When the Queen turns up reversed, it can mean that the emotional maturity we were talking about has gone awry and left us with a feeling of immaturity and emotional neediness. Wade says the accounts vary, good woman, otherwise distinguished woman, but one not to be trusted, perverse woman, vice, dishonour, depravity. Depravity? Goodness me, you never know what to expect, do you? Anyway, when she's upside down, it can bring us back to that untrustworthy aspect. Rachel Pollack says reversing the Queen of Cups breaks that unity of vision and action. We see someone ambitious and powerful, yet dangerous because she cannot be trusted. In the Thoth Queen, Crowley looks at the negative aspects as being a kind of twisted and warped version of the card. He says if ill-dignified, all these qualities are degraded. Anything that passes through her is refracted and distorted. In the reverse, and when the Querent is a young man, this card tells him that his marriage will take place soon. Do you know why the Queen of Cups married the King of Cups? Because they were perfectly suited to each other. <laughs> Off with his head! The big takeaway for the Queen of Cups is kindness, dreams and effectiveness. In particular, this combination of quiet thoughtfulness and positive action. Queen Elizabeth once said, we all need to get the balance right between action and reflection. With so many distractions, it's easy to forget to pause and take stock. Thank you for stomaching another round of Dismal Tripe here at Kippy's Quest. May the coming days bring you vision and the virtue to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.